Good morning, Happy New Year. Listening. Listening comes first. In this life, we listen. We listen even before we are aware that we are listening. You know that uh, research has, uh, has demonstrated and they talk about now how from within the womb, the unborn child is already, you were already listening in the womb to the voices of your parents. And after a child's birth, she will spend the next months hearing the words that the parents speak, whisper to her, the words that they sing to her, until one day she will start echoing those words, one imperfect syllable at a time. To master a foreign language, you can't just do it by reading a book. You have to hear it spoken before by others before you can reproduce the sounds that your ears have heard. And much of our formative years are spent in classrooms. And what do you do in the classroom? Um, probably the biggest thing you do is listen. You listen to the teachers. You spend your years at home listening to your parents. You spend your years in church listening to the stories that the Bible tells us. And when we turn to the very opening pages of the story of the Bible, when we are, meet the primeval universe in Genesis, we learn that everything is unformed, it's, a, it's chaotic, but somehow all of that mess has an ear because the first action is to listen to the voice that permeates the darkness. And so it is God speaking, commanding light, and the cosmos hears and obeys. And God said, let there be, and they listened, and it was so. And through the acts of listening, order, and harmony take over from the chaos and unformed. And six days into the making of this listening world, God creates the first human beings. And their first act is to hear the blessing of God, to populate the earth and with other image bearers and God listeners. Listening is foundational to what it means to be human. And throughout the Bible, listening is the, the central act that characterizes the people of God. They, the people of God are those who are gathered and formed by God's voice. The people of God are those who are, are held together by God's word. They hear God's promises. They hear God's judgments. They hear God's instructions and they hear God's warnings, God's reassurances, God's exhortation. And so it's not surprising, really, that the centerpiece of Israel's prayer life was the Shema. And it begins with that word, hear, Shema. Hear, O Israel, listen, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Shama means hear. And Jewish children are instructed to rehearse these words as they got up in the morning and just before they fall asleep at night. Hear, O Israel. And from dawn to dusk, their lives are focused on that listening. And Paul reminds us that hearing has to come before faith. Indeed, that faith proceeds from hearing. How can someone believe, Paul asks, if, how can someone believe in someone that they've never heard of? And so faith comes from what is heard. 
and what is heard comes through the word about Christ. And the apostle James counsels his hearers to be quick to listen and slow to speak. And ancient wisdom cautions us that if somebody gives an answer before hearing, it is folly, foolishness, and shame. In a few passages in the Bible, hearing and doing are are pitted against each other like bitter rivals. But almost always, it seems that doing is the preferred mode of action. And so, for example, Paul says that that, uh, it's not those who hear the law, but those who do the law who are righteous. James warns that people deceive themselves into thinking that they just need to listen and that they don't need to be doers. And Jesus concludes his Sermon on the Mount that we'll get back to one day by comparing people who hear his words but don't act on them to a house that is built on sand. Hearing and doing. And so there's clear warnings that hearing by itself cannot be trusted and that doing is the badge of faithfulness. And yet we need to be careful about that sharp distinction between hearing and doing, that we don't overemphasize it, that we we don't push it too far. Because the words, our English words, listen and obey, actually come from the same root. In Latin, the word obey would not exist without the word listen. And so the word that we translate into English as obedience literally means listening from below. What does that mean? Well, I think what it means is that obedience is is deep listening. Obedience is a listening of our of, of our whole person. It's a hearing not just with our ears, but with our hearts, with our whole being. Obedience. And that deep connection between listening and obedience also appears in the in the primary languages of the Bible, Greek and Hebrew. The biblical words for listen or hear can just as easily be translated, and in many passages, the translators have uh, used the words obey or give heed to. So that interconnection between listening and obeying. And the words... Uh, the root for the words that are translated in our New Testament as obey and obedience, they come from the same root, again, that sense of listening. So listening and obedience are are, uh, inseparably linked to the extent that we can say, I think, that those who don't act on what they hear have not actually heard. Those who don't act on what they have heard have not actually listened. Biblically speaking, somebody has said, biblically speaking, to hear and not to do is not to hear at all. Think about in our everyday speech how we how we communicate that. We, we, I think we regularly communicate that listening involves more than the sense of just hearing. When a parent, parents, you, you know this, when a parent complains that their children, she, he just isn't listening, what are you really saying? They're not obeying, right? When, you, when parents say that their children won't listen to them, 
they mean they don't obey. They're not obeying. Or let's, let's not just pick on the kids. How many of us have heard these words? You should have listened. To, interesting. Listen to me. But what you mean is, you should have listened to me. But what you mean is exactly what you said, Christine. You should have done what I told you to do. Um, right. You should have listened. You should have done. Again, that link that we make between listening and obeying. Hearing and doing. And so it's not surprising that in the Bible, uh, someone who, I guess it's not so difficult in these days of computer uh, technology, but the word um, listen appears in the Bible some 1,500 times, more than 1,500 times, somebody says. And, but the most frequently voiced complaint in the Bible is that people don't listen meaning they don't do. Listening is never passive. Listening is not just a placeholder until uh, doing steps in and and saves the day. Uh, Biblical listening is a wholehearted, full-bodied listening. It's not just sound that vibrates our eardrums. It's, It's listening that echoes echoes in our souls. It's a listening that resonates out into our our whole beings. Think about John. In the beginning was the word. It's a famous picture that John paints in those first few verses of his gospel of Jesus as the word of God. What's he getting at? Well, I think what he's saying is that Jesus' entire incarnated life in the flesh, not just his parables, not just his sermons, not just the words, not just his teachings, but his entire enfleshed life is the expression of God's word. His life, Jesus' life, lived out is God's speech to us. And so we are asked in the same way, and I appreciate uh, uh, Laura and Ben touching on this, we're we're asked to to listen with our lives. They were talking about how we have been reconciled and we are called to be reconcilers, agents of reconciliation. And so we are called to listen with our lives. And we're not truly listening unless we are responding to Jesus with our heart, with our mind, with our soul, with our strength. I like this phrase. Never thought about this until I was doing preparation for sharing these things with you today. The beginning of discipleship, the beginning of following Jesus is listening. Think about the stories of the first followers of Jesus. What happens? In so many cases, they hear his voice and they drop their nets and they follow him. Now, obviously, discipleship involves more than one episode of listening. It's an ongoing journey of listening. But discipleship starts with listening. And it continues with listening. And so we could also say not only is the beginning of following Jesus listening, but disciples are walking listeners. What Picture comes to your mind's eye. Disciples are walking listeners. If I was to come up with my own illustration for that, I I see a big ear with legs. (laughs) 
But if you think that discipleship is lacking in Christians today, then maybe maybe we need to re-emphasize that we need uh, we need to re-emphasize or emphasize learning how to listen. Whether we realize it or not, we are persistently serenaded by a cacophony of voices battling for our souls, and each is seducing us with promises of fullness. You come here each week, and we have an hour to listen. But some marketing experts have estimated that North Americans are exposed to as many as 4,000 ads a day. Some of us spend 15 hours or more a day listening to the voices coming from the screen or the speaker. The Canadian advertising market is among the 10 largest ad markets in the world. Does advertising work? Well, in 2019, ad spending in Canada amounted to over 11 billion US dollars. Either somebody's throwing away a lot of money or they think we're listening. In such a world, we have the freedom. Even though it's, we're, being, we're being bombarded by all of this, we do have the freedom to be the ultimate selective listeners. You don't have to listen, hear, respond to everything. That has its blessings, also has its curses because we also develop the attitude well you know what if i don't like what one voice over here is saying if 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 what i'm listening to here doesn't deliver what if i'm listening to here doesn't deliver then i can always listen to another voice i can always find someone else that gives me more satisfaction something else that that tickles the ears to use a phrase from the bible itself And so as a result, this has been documented. Our attention span has become shorter and shorter and shorter. I've seen some suggestions that our attention span is no long, is no more uh, than a that of a goldfish. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've read. It um, seems a little harsh for the goldfish. But our attention span becomes shorter and shorter, and our tastes become more demanding. And we can become consumers who are impossible to please. Because you know that $11 billion U.S. that they spend on ads is telling us, it's telling us there is always something better, right? There is something more appealing and there's always that voice somewhere that's saying there's a, something better. There's a more appealing voice speaking somewhere else, promising us more happiness. So the sort of people that we become is in large part determined by the voices that we choose to listen to. We don't have a choice of listening versus not listening. It's that selective listening that we need to practice. I don't know what your word is for 2020. A lot of words I've heard in the past week or so people have been using to describe 2020. A lot of it is just good riddance. But here's a good word that I want to suggest for us as a church 
in 2021. Nothing dramatic, nothing earth shattering. It's just the word listen. We all obey certain voices. So the question is not, will I listen? The question is, which voices am I going to listen to? And maybe in 2021, we can practice some selective listening and listen to these voices. Listen to God, listen to Jesus, and listen to the Holy Spirit. Those are the first voices we can start listening to. But it's not only a matter of choosing to listen to good voices over bad ones. It's also a matter of whether we're going to choose to listen to different voices, voices that don't sound the same as our own. You know, one of the tragedies in the past few years, and and researchers have been talking about this, especially this past year, is that we all have our little circles now of voices that we listen to. Social media, we can choose, and we hear the voices that reaffirm, that confirm, that, that say the things that we agree with. The, they like the color red, I like the color red. Great, you like the color blue, I don't listen to you. And there I rhymed and I didn't even plan on that. But will we choose to listen to different voices? Will we listen to voices of different cultures, of different ethnicities? Can we choose to listen this year to voices that come from different backgrounds, different experiences? Will we listen to voices that unsettle us? Voices that might make us feel anxious or guilty. Will we listen to one another? If we choose to listen only to voices that echo our own, then we're going to be limited in our growth. We're going to be stunted in our spirituality. Choosing to tune in to just one or two voices may be Comfortable, but it's not transforming. The voices we want to hear are not always the same as the voices we need to hear. What voices do you need to hear this year? We need to listen to God, to Jesus to the Holy Spirit, and to one another. That's why we're called to be together as church. We're baptized into the body. We're not lone ranger Christians off riding into the sunset. So let's make it our theme in 2021 to listen. Listen.